if we're forced to sort of put ourselves out onto Twitter, like I am Robert, I am yeah. Mark, uh-huh. does that create a level of accountability where not necessarily by shaming, but just making sure that I am a person out there and, you know, takes back a little bit of my knee jerk reaction and sort of, uh, you know, violent language just by forcing that person to acknowledge that they are who they are. Yeah, there's no doubt that a lot of the, the presumption of hate that exists on Twitter and elsewhere in social media is people using not using their names. It, it's not it's not necessarily the case that people will only do this anonymously. But I believe whether we're we're trying to raise the consciousness of, of someone who's got their real name and picture on there or someone who's not either way, I believe it's the same effect. I believe that 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 um, even even anonymously uh, uh, calling them out, try to use phrases that don't sound hostile or 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 confrontational. Call them out. It's probably not the kind of phrase I really I would like us to be thinking of consciousness raising, contextualizing. Those are more along the lines of what I think will work. It has to be, it has to be about love and compassion and about and about uh, and about grace. So I think you're right that if we use our names, whether we're going uh, with uh, to, to 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 visit with someone online who is using their name or not, I think the important thing is we be three dimensional figures as much as possible. Just as the targets we're trying to help need to be three-dimensional figures. And we can make them three-dimensional figures much more easily if if we're three-dimensional figures. 